Hey friends, what's up? College Essay Guy here. So today I want to share with you two essays that I believe are outstanding that were written on pretty common topics. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, I feel like a lot of students think that they have to write about some crazy thing that happened to them or some weird hobby they have like medieval blacksmithing or, you know, if they were the first female Bahraini indoor skydiver, both of which were true for students that I've worked with. But I want to tell you that you don't have to be a medieval blacksmith or a female Bahraini indoor skydiver. I want to show you how to stand out with somewhat common topics. Specifically, I want to share with you a personal statement that I believe demonstrates the four qualities of an outstanding personal statement, which I'll reveal as we go. And like I said, was written on a mundane topic. And then I want to go over one of that student's supplemental essays. Now, a supplemental essay is an essay that's required by some highly selective schools and is written in addition to your main personal statement. And I want to show you how you can stand out and how this student stood out and revealed another side to himself, but also wrote on a mundane topic. How did he do it and still get into some amazing schools? That's what I want to show you. And then I want to share with you what you can learn from this when you're writing your own essay. Let's do this. All right, so what was the common topic that this student chose? Food. Now, why do I say it's common? Well, two years ago, I had three different students all writing about food, but the thing was, all of their essays were very, very different. I wanna look at this essay, I'm gonna read it to you, and then I wanna to talk to you about what are the four qualities of an outstanding personal statement that this student shows. All right, check this out. So the student writes, since 1941, my family has had an odd tradition. Three days a week, my great-grandfather, Pop, brought home ribs. After dinner, he'd go around the table inspecting each plate, making sure each rib was stripped down to the bone. If you found one morsel, you couldn't be excused. Pop believed that before you could leave the table, you had to finish your ribs. So one thing I want you to notice is the specific details he's using. And the value of that is that it draws us in and it sets his family and their relationship to food apart from every other family's, including yours. This lesson has stuck with me, he continues. Whether I'm staying up until two in the morning to figure out the radius of convergence of a power series or identifying solutions to countless concerns issued by my school district, I strive to finish my ribs. But this is just one of the many lessons food has taught me. Two things I want you to notice that he's doing there. Number one is that he's taking the food thing and the lesson and he's connecting it to other sides of himself. More on that in just a minute. And then he's got this really nice transition sentence that sets up the whole essay. I'm gonna read it again. But this is just one of the many lessons food has taught me. And when we hear that, we go, ah, okay. Now I know what this essay is gonna be about because he's clearly established the theme AKA the topic of his personal statement. Let's see what he does next. During Thanksgiving, instead of going around the table to express thanks, my family writes notes on the tablecloth, the same one for the past 26 years. You'll find thoughts from my dad, but only until 2004, or corny jokes from my stepdad, but only until 2016. And you'll read family is everything from my great grandmother, Nan, but only until 2017. Two quick things I want you to notice about this paragraph. Number one, he's demonstrating vulnerability, which is to say he's sharing some personal details, but also he's doing it in a subtle way. He's not fully explaining everything, which kind of keeps us intrigued. You'll find thoughts from my dad, he writes, but only until 2004. So we sense that something has happened. There's been a divorce or maybe his father has passed away, but he doesn't fully explain it yet. Or corny jokes from my stepdad, but only until 2016. Was there maybe a second divorce? In this case, there actually was, but it's very subtle and specific and detailed. Next paragraph. My family's far from perfect, but it's in the presence of a tablecloth where time freezes and I begin to feel an unfamiliar sense of stability. It's where my brother Noah told my dad he loved him after six years of not communicating, where mom sat next to dad without a lawyer by their side, and where my family has gathered for every birthday at the same restaurant since I was four. To me, eating means celebrating, culture, people, life. And I celebrated Nan's life by trying a dish I've feared since my first Passover, gefilte fish, a stuffed seafood concoction. It's not the taste I remember clearly, but rather how it began a cascade of tasting other Jewish foods, chopped liver, beef tongue, pickled herring. In the time since, I've realized gefilte fish is more than just the unfamiliar food tucked away in my great grandma's fridge. It represents the opportunities that arise from trying new things. See what he did there? He did it again. So he's using 
his common thread, which is food, he's giving a specific example, and he's connecting it to a particular value. In this case, the value of trying new things. And notice at the end of that paragraph, he says, it represents opportunities that arise from trying new things. You can probably guess where he's going next, but let's see. Because gefilte fish is everywhere. Now that's a beautiful transition. It's like this thing, gefilte fish, is actually a metaphor for something larger. For what? In some cases, gefilte fish has meant testing different locations of bins to minimize food waste in a school with no cafeteria. Or researching how biofortification can create an allosteric inhibitor reducing the release of ethylene, thus increasing the shelf life of produce. So again, notice how he's taking the main theme or thread, which is food, giving a specific example, and giving a lesson that he's learned that he connects to other areas of his life. So we start to see that this isn't just a lesson that he connects to food, but it's something that he's really internalized and been able to manifest in other ways. And now that's what colleges are interested. What are the skills, qualities, values, and interests that you've developed that you're gonna bring with you to the college campus? Giving us these specific examples lets us know that yeah, he's open to trying new things and experimenting. He continues. The lessons I learned through food aren't just limited to traditional meals though. For the past five years, I've sold Otter Pops, a type of popsicle at Spokane's annual race. Every year my business grows. I hire new employees to manage new stands throughout the course to sell thousands of pops. But while my popsicle empire expands, one thing remains true. I take a break amid the chaos to eat my own Otter Pops. It's the same reason I play volleyball with friends after a long week of school and swim in the river with my football teammates after we finish conditioning. I take tremendous pride in these things. In fact, I find them necessary. Now here's the third instance of him doing this, where he's given this specific example, eating his own Otter Pops, connected it to a value, which is the value of celebrating, resting, you know, taking stock of what you've done and just hanging out. And he's connected it to other examples. For example, you know, I play volleyball with my friends or I swim in the river with football teammates. So this is a guy who's not just working hard in some areas, but he also takes time to celebrate life. All right, now he's coming into his conclusion here. Check out what he does. And when I cook, I transform a part of raw earth into raw culture. Preparing steak enables me to remember my great grandfather while eating it reminds me of its destruction to the environment. This is how I understand the world. I cook to discover myself I eat to learn about the world around me. But we've become a product of the industrial food system, leading us to believe food is just another commodity and rendering us unable to identify that it exists at the seed of our very identity. This is why I wanna study anthropology and public policy, to restore the bond between humans, food, and culture, and to create the policies that will ensure those who are food insecure have the same opportunity to do so themselves. Tons of values in there. We'll analyze them in just a second. Here are his final lines. I have so much left to eat in this world. So much to change, so much to create, and even more to impact. I'm hungry. Now, you knew he had to end like that, right? One of the keys to a great ending, and this is a whole separate topic for another video, is how do you make sure your final lines are surprising, but inevitable? In this case, I think he brings forth both qualities. All right, so what are the four qualities of an outstanding personal statement that this student shows? Number one, values. You can see so many values. Let's just analyze them really quick. In that first paragraph, he's got the finish your rib story. And that's really just a representation of his determination. I finish what I start. In the next paragraph, he's got the family notes on the tablecloth, which demonstrates the value, the quality of vulnerability. More on that in a second. The third paragraph talks about gefilte fish, which is really a symbolic thing for experimenting and trying new things. And again, he connects it not just to food, but to other areas of his life. The otter pops, which we looked at briefly, is rest, right? His ability to take time to enjoy the fruits of his labor. And then you've got cooking, which for him represents not only family, but also environmental impact, which connects to his future career, his future major. Notice how he kind of broke those up into separate paragraphs or what I call chunks of the essay. And you can do that too when you're creating your outline. You can basically think of what are the different examples I wanna use and each one can be like a mini scene in the movie of your essay as it were. The second thing I think he does really well and the second quality of an outstanding personal statement is in my mind, insight. Now insight is the answer to the question, so what? Can you surprise us with your answer to the question, so what? And he does that a few times in the essay, but my favorite line is the one that reads, 
This is how I understand the world. I cook to discover myself. I eat to learn about the world around me. So this eliminates for us why he cooks. The third quality of an outstanding personal statement, in my opinion, is vulnerability. And you'll notice in that family paragraph, when he's talking about the tablecloth, there's some really nice details that wouldn't be present anywhere else in his application. And it helps make the personal statement actually personal. The fourth quality of an outstanding personal statement, in my opinion, is craft. And craft just means you've spent some time clearly revising this to make your ideas clear, specific, and in many cases, succinct. And he does that in some really nice ways. In that family paragraph that I mentioned, he's got things like, you'll find thoughts from my dad, but only until 2004. And then he closes that essay with a memorable phrase, I'm hungry, dot, dot, dot. But he's not done there. So in his second essay, which was his supplemental essay that he wrote for Stanford, Stanford asked, what's meaningful to you and why? And this was an opportunity to talk about a whole different side of himself. And he spent a lot of time thinking about what should I demonstrate? What could I show? And this is what he landed on. Check out the essay. Growing up a football player afraid of contact, I've heard the phrase, be a man, more times than I've heard my dad say, I love you. And that's no coincidence. Society taught him, taught us to be that way. Pause right there. Normally when I read a football essay, I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go, another sports essay. But notice how in the beginning, he's setting himself apart by identifying as a football player afraid of contact. So that sets him apart, right? He's not talking about toughness, about leadership, teamwork. He's saying, here's a, a message that society has given me, be a man. And it sort of creates this opposite in our minds. We go, okay, well, he's supposed to be this tough football player, but actually he's maybe not. And it raises a question in our minds. Well, how does he deal with this seeming contradiction? Trapped underneath my sweaty pads, I'm coached to be strong when I'm weak, tough when I'm in pain, cocky when I'm insecure. But that's not me. I'm a boy who collects stuffed polar bears and cuddles with them when I'm feeling down. I'd rather wander through a grocery store than spending time perusing a Home Depot. And by no means am I a handyman. I'm a softy who happens to throw a tight spiral. So he's deepening our understanding of this seeming contradictory sides of him, right? society's expectations of what a football player should look like with these specific details, loving stuffed polar bears, you know, loving food, which kind of calls back to his other essay. And he's saying, these things live, you know, within me, both of these things, which is vulnerable, right? And also raises the question, okay, well, how is he going to resolve this? How does, where does this go? Let's find out. But sometime during my 13 seasons of football, notice he works in, hey, I've done this for 13 years. I realized that living in the weight room, hitting harder than your opponent, or leading a game-winning drive is not what makes you a good man. Rather, it's being human enough to stand up for those who can't walk, speak for those who don't have a voice, and admit the damages of a lifestyle that has enveloped you since you could walk. As I battle for the starting quarterback position this year, it's my turn to redefine the term that tried to define me, so that when the next generation of football players gets told to be a man, it means to use your heart, not just your helmet. Because to me, changing the narrative of how boys view masculinity matters. Notice again that surprising but inevitable ending. So we're surprised because we didn't think he was going to say that, but when he says it, yes, that really is the thesis of his whole essay. And that's another tip for ending your essay. Save your thesis for the ending. So it's the culmination, and it makes it a little surprising when you say it there at the very end. So again, what are those four qualities of an outstanding essay? In my opinion, number one, values. Does the student demonstrate values in this essay? Absolutely. Number two is insight. Does he answer the question, so what, in a way that's somewhat surprising? I think so. The third one is vulnerability. Is he vulnerable in this essay? Yes. And fourth is craft. Is it clear that he's revised this over many drafts? Yeah. That's what I think makes this essay so awesome. The last thing I wanna share with you is a quick framework for thinking about how to make your essay stand out. Now, a boring essay, which is a personal statement or supplemental essay, I think chooses a common topic, makes common connections, which I'll explain in a second, and uses common language. So a common topic is something that everybody else might write about. Now, in this case, he uses a common topic, which is a common sport like football. But the way he stands out is through uncommon connections. Now, common connections are take something like football and connect it to what everybody else would talk about. What are the values everyone else talks about in a football essay? You know, teamwork, leadership, discipline, hard work. But he actually connects it to some values that we might not expect. 
And you'll have to go back in this video to see what are the connections that he makes? What are the values that he points out that are surprising to us? Because that's what makes this essay stand out. And then the third one is uncommon language. And he uses some language in here that you wouldn't necessarily expect in your typical football essay. This is the most important part of this video. I believe that the more common your topic is, if you want to stand out, the more uncommon the connections that you're making are and the language needs to be. Again, common, 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 you'll blend in. But if you can get at least two of the three to be uncommon, and that could mean having an uncommon topic, but it doesn't have to be. If you've got a common topic, more uncommon connections and more uncommon language are gonna help you stand out. So hopefully you found that useful. If you've got more questions or you want more resources, go to collegeessayguide.com. I put together tons and tons of stuff to help you through this journey. Uh, if you've got a particular question or a thing you'd like me to cover in a future video, just put them in the comments section below. And um, if you want more videos like this, either hit like or you can subscribe. I've got tons more videos that I'm creating and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you.